Sam from Sound on Sound magazine here. I'm at Superbooth in Berlin on the Tip Top Audio stand. Uh, this instrument that we're standing behind is a result of a partnership, a long-standing partnership between Tip Top Audio and Buchler Audio. And your aim is basically to take the classic Buchler designs and make them affordable to people like you and me. Um, and you've got a couple of really important new modules coming. Yes, so this year we completed the first batch of Eurorack uh, Bukla and Tip Top modules that we introduced uh, two years ago. Um, the recent one that we just started shipping is the 292 Lopus Gates. Um, unfortunately, we cannot sell them in Europe because uh, vectors are banned in Europe. Uh, but we are working on another version that is supposed to replace vectors in Lopus Gates. It's a very interesting project. We actually have a scientist in the UK working on it as we speak. Um, and we have great hopes for that because vectors will not stay with us for many more decades as they are getting banned all over the world due to the uh, cadmium that is inside of them. Um, but this release was wonderful and uh, it's a, just a beautiful sound, very percussive um, and very booklish sound. I think it's, this is the, the bookless sound. Um, and then in here in Superboot, what we're showing to this year is two new modules. And we start with a 296. And this is really a flagship. This is, uh, I would say, the cherry on top um, as far as the Bukla modules. It's, uh, it's a 16-band uh, equalizer, though I don't like to call it an equalizer because those bands were not made to EQ your track. They were made for sound design. Um, each of them has a voltage control input. Each of them has an envelope follower on the output. Each of them has an individual output or a mixed output. And on top of it, the thing has internal cross uh, modulation where you can set it up as a vocoder. So, and that takes us to another module, which is the 207. The 207 is a six channel mixer with a preamp. Um, and this brings human voice into the Bukla system. Um, not just human voice, I mean, you can amplify here also, you know, synthesizer with line level and things like that. But um, the obvious use will be with a microphone. And that mixer, you can also uh, expand it with uh, another mixer. There's an expansion input here, so you can take the output from another mixer into the expansion in, and then you have a 12-channel mixer, and you, you can just grow uh, the mixers as you go. Um, and the combination of those two modules together adds up to what's already very, I, th I think, very interesting and just sounds lovely. Um, and it feels now that the system is almost complete. There's still more modules in the making, still more of the 200 series that we're working on. Um, but I think that once we got the 296 uh, ready, this is like giving everyone the, a good feeling that we are actually going all in. <laughs> and is this available now, the 296? It's going to be available pretty soon. We quite, I mean, we, I've been playing with this for the past, I would say, two months. Um, it's great. We are now making several prototypes to send to, to other uh, users that we work with, checking it. And I think that um, in the coming months, we will see it coming out. Do you know how much it's going to cost you? Yeah, it will probably be anywhere between 800 to thousand dollar something like that i know it's not cheap or you know it, but it's still affordable when you compare it to to the alternative and when you know how many parts are inside it that's the thing exactly the the each of those filters have basically uh, three filters in series times 16. it's heavily loaded with components and um, filters that are so steep needs really good parts you cannot uh, use um, you know anything that is other than great in here. And if you do, what you get is a sound. If that's the spectrum of sound this can, can do, it will go to something like that. And it will be a shame to do that. So we know it increases the price of the, of the, of the thing itself, but I think, you know, it's something worth uh, working for and get, even if it costs so much. Totally. And I'm hoping I can persuade you to give us a quick demo now. Yeah, so um, maybe we start, I will give you like a, a little vocoder patch. So one, two, three, let me see. I 
think you can immediately hear sounds that you would hear in Hollywood movies from the 70s, 80s, things that we grew up on playing this. This is such a classic. Um, the vocoder patch that I'm doing here right now uses the uh, even channels to control the odd channels. So it basically breaks the device into two sections of eight uh, bandpass filters. Uh, but the reason all these bandpass and CV are here were actually to use two of those and patch all the envelope followers into the CV input of the another unit and have a true 16 band vocoder. So uh, it's pretty nice. <laughs> okay, so let me turn this uh, down and let's see what else this can do. So if I go and um, I take a square wave from the 258 and I'm going to take the output of the what's called the attenuator out. This is the section that sums basically all the bands through the faders and we can go. You can hear how nicely they sound. And because they're not using feedback for getting that thick sound, they're not harsh. And that was just a square wave. You can see how beautifully it breaks all the harmonic. It's just, to me, it's so impressive that somebody designed something like that in the days where you would sit with a pencil and draw circuit boards. Um, so this is what's called the attenuator output, and this is called the program output. And the program output is the same bands going through VCAs. And those VCAs can be controlled either with something like this, which just morph through the, all of them. And this is voltage controllable. So if we take, for example, a random signal from the 266 here, plug it in here, you can see how it starts wandering. And this is the width, how much, how many bands will be opened up. So it's, it's really nice how everything, all those signals go internally into different sections. And one of the challenges for us was to make sure it doesn't clip. Because when you have so many signals that needs to be summed together, um, there are challenges, especially because these bands are picking so strong. Um, another thing is obviously all those CV inputs. So again, you can theoretically take like a random voltage and you can hear shoot here let's see just a single oh i unplug the output okay so you can hear how a single cable open up a single band you can go to different And what's nice is that you can modulate both, basically all of those from different sources, as well as this section at the same time. And you can hear each of the bands separately. So, I mean, look how many inputs and outputs and just imagine the possibilities. That's incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's, that's going to be amazing. Yeah, yes, absolutely.
Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Great to see you.